Hello, Ford Camera followers, subscribers on our YouTube channel, and welcome to today's episode of Ford Camera Camera Tutorials. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about two very special German cameras. Um, it's the Exacta camera, um, as well as the Exa, its little baby brother. These cameras are some of the first SLR cameras, or this company produced some of the first SLR cameras in the entire world. Uh, the bigger brother, Exacta, was uh, used by scientists and very uh, technically oriented photographers. Um, and the baby brother uh, was pretty revolutionary for its time, and they work a little differently than modern day SLRs. Um, first, I'm going to move the Exa to the side, and we're going to talk about the Exacta today. This one particular model is from the 50s. Uh, believe it or not, there were SLRs in the 50s, and this would have been incredibly expensive back then, and I highly recommend this camera. The camera has a Carl Zeiss um, lens built into it, this particular one. Um, there are many different lenses that are available, and you can get super high-quality lenses for a fraction of the price of many other higher-quality cameras. This one is a high-quality camera. Um, this would have been used by professionals of the time. It is 35 millimeter as well as the baby brother over here, both 35 millimeter black and white in color. They take both um, beautiful photos. Um, and so let's kind of explore how this unusual camera works. You'll notice that there is a button on the front of the camera, not on the top. This is uh, to press to take a photo. Um, also kind of unusual, it's not like the Japanese cameras. Um, to wind the film, it's actually on the left side, on the top, not the right side as you usually see on Canon, Nikon, Pentax, so on and so forth. So kind of unusual. However, this is a revolutionary camera. Something else that's really great about this camera um, that's similar to the Nikon SLRs um, for the F series is that there's a pop-up hood on the top of the camera. And so if you want to take a look through the viewfinder from your waist level, you could do so on this camera. Um, you could also move this upwards and shoot kind of directly through here. So you have a choice of looking through the lens. Um, there's a magnifying glass too, if you'd like to use the viewfinder. Very cool, kind of like a Roloflex a little bit, um, a little old school, uh, and it produces a really nice image. Um, but the cool thing about this camera is not just that. I, again, I mentioned that it was made for scientists um, and other people who are in the technical fields, is that this part actually comes right off. So to take the top prism off the viewfinder, there is a knob right here and we press down and you'll notice you hear a clicking sound and that's because the top will pop off. Um, there are many different attachments that were made for this camera. This is the viewfinder attachment so you could look down waist level on your camera. Um, on the other camera we have a little bit of a dented top. That's okay, it still works. But uh, it does the same thing. You could pop this off. This is actually a prison so you could look through using an eyepiece. So if I wanted to use one attachment, I felt like one day I want to waste a level viewfinder or one day I want to have, look through with my eye, I could just move back and forth. You could buy these separately on eBay. They're readily available as well as lenses for this camera. Um, and both of these cameras are in our shop currently. So again, um, you want to look through it using your eye. You just kind of place this on the top and it clicks right in, and you notice that it's pretty incredible. Uh, so now we have a viewfinder for our eyes for our SLR. Now, um, a couple other features really interesting on this camera. Um, there's a curtain which takes the shutter speed in the, in the photo. So I open up the camera by, um, on the left-hand side, there's a little knob I press down where the arrow, um, and out pops the door. So I could detach the door. And you'll notice that unlike a lot of other SLRs, Japanese SLRs, this particular camera is kind of an early SLR. And so the film spool can be removed from the side over here. So 
um, on the bottom, on the left, there's a little knob. You push it upwards, and the spool will pop right out. I'm not going to take it out um, because we really don't need to see that right now, but it can come out. And it, the film runs from the right-hand side to the left-hand side, unlike the Japanese cameras. Very unusual. So you put your 35 millimeter spool in here, close it, run the film spool around the back, and into this spool, just the opposite as most other SLRs, the complete opposite actually. So you've got the knob on the left-hand side to wind the film, and you put the film on the right-hand side, unlike most Japanese SLRs that you might be used to, but it still works great. And the other thing is, it's kind of sharp. Um, back in the day, you would want to cut the film, remove the film on here in a dark room. You don't need to do that anymore, but they have a little knife when you move this knob here, you could cut the film manually. There's a little knife that will chop the film off the spool. That's just an old school feature that we don't use anymore, but if you like to, you could do that. Just be aware that when you place the film inside this camera, you don't wanna hurt yourself with this little knife, okay? Um, so anyway, as you can see, there's a curtain. Now to crank the camera, oh, by the way, over here, uh, uh, it tells us what picture we'd be on right up here. So if you notice there's numbers here, it'll tell you what frame you're on. So we would crank it. Right now we're on bulb mode, right? So if we want to change it to a different shutter speed, say one one thousandth of a second, we would move it to a thousand. Or, you know, one one hundredth of a second, we move it to a hundredth of a second. But you always follow the arrow, so it'd be counterclockwise. So we move that for the shutter speed, 150th, 125th. Um, and then there's time mode, which is Z, and bulb mode. So I'm going to put out one 1,000th one of a second, right, which is the fastest. And the cool thing about this is back in the 1950s, that would have been revolutionary. We Most SLR cameras that you use from the 70s and the 60s, um, in the 80s, one one thousandth of a second is standard. However, on these really old cameras, that's revolutionary, one one thousandth of a second. Anyway, so I just cranked it. Um, and to take a photo, I press down on the shutter button, which is the front of the camera. It takes a little getting used to. And you'll notice that it takes a photo. Now, I'll show you again. Um, the mechanism is a little different. It's a curtain shutter. So you'll notice when I wound it, I'll press it so you can see it. Um, it goes by really quickly. So if I do it at a, a slower speed, say one one hundredth of a second. You'll notice the curtain move to the next slide, right? And then, or a slower speed, one one fiftieth of a second. Move it. And then watch what happens. You'll notice that it, it went across, okay? Um, let's just say you want to have a little bit of a timing on your camera. So you put it on a tripod, you want it to take long exposures, or you want to want it to wait until it takes your photo, you know, set up on a tripod, you would move this. This is a, a timer, um, and there are manuals online to tell you a little bit more about how to use this part. I don't usually use this when I use this camera, um, but if you'd like to do long, ex long, long exposures, like 12 seconds or minutes or you know, uh, you want to have it wait for you and set it up on the tripod. You know, there's a tripod mount on the bottom. You could do that. Um, and it makes really great photos, especially with the super sexy Carl Zeiss lens. Now, there are a lot of other manufacturers who produce lenses for Exacta. This was a big name in the 50s um, all the way up until the 70s uh, when the company unfortunately went under. Uh, however, German cameras, I have to admit, are my personal favorite. Um, they're, they're built to last. They're built like tanks. And the, the design and the engineering um, that goes into these cameras is remarkable, especially for the lenses. Uh, so that's just a personal bias of mine. Um, to take the, uh, let me, by the way, place the back back onto the um, camera. Now that the back is on we would fasten it down until it clicks, right? Make sure the light doesn't come in. It's nice and locked now. Um, but now we need to talk about how to take the lens um, on and off of this camera. Now, this is it has its own lens mount for Exacta, which is readily available. You could find them online, these lenses, and they're very good. 
um, it takes a little extra uh, push, right, because um, it's on very tight, but it pops right off by pressing this knob. You could take the lens on and off. Um, notice the lens is really nice and clean. Like you always want to check these lenses to make sure they're in good shape, especially if they're from the, you know, 1950s, that's 60 some odd years ago. So, um, and you'll notice something kind of interesting on the inside of the camera. The mirror right now is upwards. So you might think, okay, well on most SLRs, the mirror just automatically comes back down. Now again, no batteries involved in this camera. It is completely manual. Um, in this older camera, there's also no light meter, right? So you're gonna have a handheld light meter. I like to use, um, on, you know, my older cameras without light meters. There's a cell phone app, believe it or not, that will, um, we could talk about in another episode of how to take light, meeting, light meter readings using your cell phone. I use that, that's my personal thing, but you could have a handheld light meter too. Um, check it out. So mirror up, right? When I wind the camera, the mirror comes right down. It's a little difficult because it's kind of dark in here, but the mirror came down. It doesn't do that until you wind on this old SLR. And then when you do, when you press the shutter button up here, right, um, the mirror flops back up. A little strange for some of us who are used to newer cameras, but if you're in the 50s, this bad boy is ready to take photos, right? Amazing, amazing camera. And once you touch it, you'll know why, because German engineering is by far the best, in my opinion. I don't know. Some people like the... Japanese, I do like Japanese a lot. I have plenty of Japanese cameras, but I have to say that these are are built to last. Um, so then I I want to stick my lens back on, right? And I place my lens on and it clicks, right? So now I have my lens on. Um, and these cameras have little um, screw-on lens protectors. So this one had a lens protector screw back on on the front, right? And then I once it's screwed on, I put it on the side. So now let's talk about another camera, right, that I mentioned before, which is this baby brother called the EXA. Now, the EXA is not as capable as its older brother, right? It doesn't have one one thousandth of a second. Um, this camera, right, at the time was, you know, it's really compact, right? Like, compare the size of this camera, right, to this one over here. Um, very compact, and if it gives you an idea, this is my hand right and compared to the camera it my hand is bigger than the camera which means it's pretty small right however it's you know really cool um especially for taking uh pictures with a 1950s slr that's kind of really interesting okay so this one has a different lens it's not a zeiss lens uh you could put zeiss lens on again it's the same um right you could get different companies made different lenses um, but equally as cool, right? Uh, this is a 50 millimeter lens on this camera. Now, um, this one, as you can see, to change the shutter speeds on the left hand side, um, and it goes up to only 1 1 50th of a second, so it's a pretty slow camera. I don't recommend taking photos in the dark with this camera or inside. You, I would, you know, take it outside in a nice sunny day the beach right you're going to get some really cool photos that way but in the dark it might be a little bit difficult if you're holding with your hand but if you want to take really long exposures in the dark i would you know set this up on a tripod um and if you notice on the front again the shutter button is right over here on the left hand side of the camera if i face this way right hand side from the front you could hook up the little wire and press it inside here. There's a, a special wire you could buy. Our store supplies them in person. You press it down, um, connect the wire to here, and it will take a photo. As you heard, you just took a photo, right? Um, so yeah, you have a limited amount of shutter speeds on this one. This is the more basic one. To take a photo, right, first off, it tells you the frame. So photo one, photo two would be right over here, right? And when I move this knob, I hear it click, right? And it will freeze. That means that we're ready to take a photo. On this one, right, um, we can open up the hood, right? See, it works just the same. You could interchange this top part, as I said before. And if you want to take a look, the viewfinder is really gorgeous. That's a sign on in my antique clock, by the way. It's pretty cool. So a lot of cool stuff here. Um, 
to take a photo, we press the button on the front, if you could see it. Oh, took a photo. I'm gonna show you the inside of this um, camera and you're gonna think it's kind of interesting too. So to, to open the camera, we press down on the back, there's a little lever here. And you'll notice that it opens right up. Again, this camera remains connected when it's opened up. Notice that this is a metal canister, right? It's an old school SLR, 35 millimeter back in the 1950s, right? Not as, uh, you know, I guess not as popular. It's a little more portable, right, than 120 film or medium format. Most cameras are starting to use roll, are using roll film. You know, Germans are thinking ahead of their time. They're using smaller formats and it's easy to take with you on trips and stuff, right? Um, so, and you get more frames on your film. Uh, anyway, so you put your film on this one on the left side and feed it over to the right. Um, and you'll notice right now uh, that the mirror is not in the position that it needs to be. But when I move the camera, check out what happens on the inside, right? It clicks and then take a photo, right? Something kind of interesting happens on the inside. It works differently. It doesn't have a curtain. It actually has a mirror that is timed. So it's a little bizarre. I mean, at the time, this is kind of revolutionary, so they're playing around with different ideas of how their camera should work. Um, to change the aperture, right, you we would just, you know, do it on the lens. The, the, the lens themselves have the aperture, which is, the ring is right over here, by the way. There is no light meter inside this camera, uh, so I always use my cell phone light meter or an external light meter. Um, but they take great photos. You want to rewind the film, you use the left knob, right? You could you would use them in tandem but they're great cameras right these are super cool right let me show you the other one again these are super cool the big brother for more professional um the small ones ultra portable and it's super cute and you're gonna get cool photos right people are gonna ask you like whoa what are you looking downwards into your slr and you're gonna say well it's because i have a really cool german um, original um, masterpiece of the camera and um, they work differently but I guarantee you're gonna have a good time with them uh, again we're gonna be selling in person if you're in Massachusetts and Boston we're gonna be selling in so uh, open market starting in late April and then we're also gonna be selling live in person in Somerville Massachusetts at the Somerville flea starting in June we should check out our Etsy shop uh, forward cameras uh, or subscribe to our YouTube YouTube channel um, You could also check out our Twitter and Instagram feeds as well as Pinterest all Forward cameras. Thank you very much uh, for signing in and hopefully you start subscribing comment feel free to ask and um, Again, these two cameras right now are for sale in our shop. Thank you very much. Take care